God said that his heart is that we would be fruitful and that we would multiply. And so that's what I'd like us to look at as a subject today. And there was a book written in 1955 that's very famous um, among Christians, especially my age. And the name of the book is Born to Reproduce. It was written by a man named Dawson Trotman who started a group of uh, ministries called The Navigators. And the subject of Born to Reproduce was that every Christian is born to not just to follow Christ themselves alone, but to help somebody else follow Christ, to make disciples who would make disciples. And the famous story that he gives in Born to Reproduce is that he was working once with a sailor near a military base, and he would meet with this sailor, and they would read the Bible, they would pray together, they would talk about different things, about spiritual things. And um, they had a great time together for a few months, and then finally, um, the sailor met somebody who also wanted to meet with Dawson Trotman and pray with him and read the Bible and be encouraged and meet. And when the sailor came to Dawson Trotman and said that I have a friend who wants to meet with you, Dawson Trotman said to his friend, you meet with him. And that's what it means to reproduce. That's what it means to multiply ministry. For us to make a disciple who then makes a disciple, who then makes a disciple, who then makes a disciple of Christ. And that's what God's plan is not for everything to come back to the pastor or not for everything to come back to the strongest leader. We are all born to be fruitful and to multiply spiritually. And so we're going to look at this in particular as it relates to a church because it's a little more difficult for churches to multiply. In fact, Donald McGavern said that um, you have to ask the question, what is the reproduction of an apple tree? And your first thought is, well, the reproduction of an apple tree is an apple. But no, it's not. The reproduction of an apple tree is another apple tree. And so it is with churches that we need to um, see that churches are not to be alone. They're intended to be fruitful and then to start other churches that start other churches and that there might be the multiplication of healthy churches among all people. And so... That doesn't happen automatically. It has to happen at every level of a church's ministry. And so every Christian needs to take on the responsibility of multiplying, of working with somebody who will work with somebody. And then every small group leader has to take on the responsibility of helping another small group grow. And every Sunday school teacher helping birth another Sunday school class. And every elder coaching another elder. And every pastor raising up other young pastors. And that's what multiplication looks like that leads to not just one apple tree, but many apple trees. There is a DNA to multiplication. And DNA in this case is gonna stand for a D, an N, and an A. And we're gonna start with the D. And the D of multiplication is that Multiplication always begins with death. In John chapter 12, verse 24, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it can bear much fruit. And see, there's a great spiritual principle there, and that is that multiplication always begins with death. 
And of course, this is a reference to the death of Christ on the cross, that he is the grain of wheat that falls into the ground and dies. And as a result of his death, burial, and resurrection, now God is bringing many sons and daughters from all over the earth into his family because Jesus was willing to start the process of multiplication by being fruitful, but then being willing to die. I love a quotation from John Piper, the famous preacher from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And he says this about this principle of death and this principle of the the death and burial of Jesus Christ. He says, "It it will often look as though Christ is defeated. That's the way it looked on Good Friday. But if China was closed for 40 years to missionaries, it was not as though Jesus accidentally slipped and fell into a tomb. No, he stepped in. And when it was sealed over, he saved 50 million Chinese from the inside without any missionaries. And when it was time, he pushed the stone away so that we could see what he had done. And when it looks as though he is buried for good, Jesus is doing something awesome in the dark. The world thinks that Jesus is done for, that he's out of the way. They think his word is buried, that his plans have failed. But Jesus is at work in the dark places. He lets himself be buried and comes out in power when and where he pleases. And his hands are full of fruit made in the dark. I like that quote because it talks in essence about how Christ was dead and buried and the world thought it was all over, but no, it was just beginning because multiplication begins with death. And this is true for us in our ministries that if we're the kind of disciple who is willing to die to things, to take up our cross daily, to do the hard thing, to when we're young, honor our father and mother, to be the kind of person who dies to kind of being unkind, but really trusts God for kindness toward everyone and lives in peace with other people. And we die to fighting and getting our own way. If we'll be the kind of disciple who dies, then we can produce disciples who are willing to take up their cross and follow Christ. And so multiplication always begins with death. And one of the ways that leaders have to die is the tendency of a leader is to do everything themselves. I can do it the best, so I'll do it. Well, we've got to die to that. We've got to be willing to help somebody else take on a responsibility that we know how to do. We need to have an apprentice. We need to be training others. We have to die to the, thing, to the idea that we always do it. And then there is one of the hardest things for churches to do, and that is they have to die to the desire in a local church for everybody to know everybody. You see, if a church insists month after month, year after year, that they want to be around their friends, that they want to know everybody, that they want to know everybody's name, that they want to um, feel comfortable at church, This is the number one reason why churches stay small. Because a church has to be willing to die. Die to their strength, which is knowing each other and being friends with each other. They have to die to that in order to reach out and include the stranger and reach out to the person who's not part of the group. And that changes the group. And the more people come, the more it changes. And as churches grow, some people don't like it and they leave. But God wants us to be fruitful and to die to those kinds of feelings and and to multiply and to grow that more and more people might come to know Jesus Christ. Another thing we have to die to is perfectionism. There are some people who won't try to do anything because they have to do it perfectly. But we have to die to that. We have to be willing to do something in a small way and fail. If we're not willing to fail, we'll never grow. We've got to die to always being perfect. We've got to die to always doing it the right way. 
In fact, one of my favorite pastors, a man named Stuart Briscoe, pastored Elmbrook Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for many, many years. He used to say it this way, if anything is worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. I like that. I mean, it's, if witnessing is worth doing, it's worth doing it just in a poor way. We didn't do a good job at it, but we tried. We might not be that great at teaching a little Sunday school class, and we might feel like another failure. But we've got to die to perfectionism. We have to take the opportunity God gives and fail. One person has put it this way, that the dirty little secret of innovation is failure. There is no innovation. There's no change unless we're willing to fail, to fall into the ground and be ashamed. But out of that, if we'll continue to follow God, he can bring great things. Another thing we have to die to, and I work on this all the time, is I have to go back and I have to ask myself, okay, what am I doing that I need to stop doing? Because sometimes greater fruitfulness in our life will only happen if we stop doing even things that we like to do. And so we need to be reflecting all the time, at least every month or two, and ask ourselves the question, what do I need to stop doing? What is not bearing fruit? What is a waste of time? What is something that somebody else can do? If I'll just help them, if I'll just pass it on. I once went to a wise leader and I said to him, if he would take on a new ministry. And this leader uh, wisely said to me, well, Rick, let me pray about it, and I want to ask God what I should take off my plate before I put on my plate what you're asking me to put on. He was wise. He knew he had to die to something if he was really going to be fruitful in this new endeavor I was asking him to get involved in. One last thought here, and that is the Latin word dis, to, to, that we translate to decide something, to make a decision. The Latin word literally means to cut. That any time we make a decision, we cut something off. We can't do one thing if we're going to decide to do something else. We have to die that we might multiply. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.